Attribute number six, magnificence. Meditation 22. Awe. Psalm 8, 1. O Yahweh, our Lord, how magnificent is your name in all the earth. The word translated magnificent is adir, which means that which is superior, mighty, powerful, splendid, used of a magnificent piece of pottery, awesome, creating wonder. God's name, that which he has revealed about himself, is mighty, awesome, magnificent, expansive, and splendorous in all the earth. What is wonderful about this attribute? Usually when we think about attributes of God that fulfill our needs, we think of attributes such as mercy, strength, or wisdom. We are acutely aware of our need to be guided or protected or strengthened. But there is another deep need in the human soul that is rarely thought of as a need, the need to be awed. God has planted deep within the human soul an appetite for awe. People travel thousands of miles and spend thousands of dollars to go see something awesome, like the Grand Canyon. We crave the feeling of being dwarfed by something huge and awe-inspiring. That is a God-given appetite and can only be fulfilled by God himself. The Grand Canyon is impressive, but after looking at it a little while, the awe is gone. The wonders of the creation can serve as samples of awesomeness, but by themselves, they're not enough to meet the need of the human soul to be staggered. We flock to theaters where an attempt has been made to create artificial awe through spectacular cinematography, but only the most withered, shriveled up soul is satisfied with pretend awe. We need something real. The longer we live with the mundane and non-glorious, the more shriveled and small our souls become. What effect would it have on your heart if you were to consciously experience God's awesome magnificence today? experiencing this attribute. The greatest tool for experiencing the awesome, magnificent, majestic adir of God is the creation. Those things that are massive beyond our comprehension that God made with his fingers assist our hearts in imagining the greatness of our God. God could have made creation such that Man was one of the biggest created things. But instead, he made things immense beyond our ability to even understand or contemplate. As a gift, it enables us to understand immensity. Simply standing next to a rock that is 20 feet high has an effect on us. It has strength and weight beyond what we can really conceive of. But a 20-foot rock is not even visible when set next to one of the foothills, and the foothills are not even bumps compared to the mountains, and the Rockies are nothing compared to the Alps, and the grandest, most staggering of the Alps does not even appear as texture to the smooth, round earth as seen from the moon. And the earth itself is a pea compared to Jupiter, which is dwarfed by the sun, which is a speck in the galaxy, which is a point of light from the billions of other galaxies. And all of it sits on God's little finger. It is obvious that God wants us to understand what awesome means. Psalm 76, 4. 
you are resplendent with light, more adir than mountains rich with game. Psalm 93, 3 and 4. The seas have lifted up, O Lord. The seas have lifted up their voice. The seas have lifted up their pounding waves, mightier than the thunder of the great waters, more adir than the breakers of the sea. The Lord on high is adir. Lord, my world is tiny, gray, dark, unimpressive. My eyes are not open to much magnificence. What I see and think about is mostly small and drab. You have made your name glorious before the face of your servant, and yet I have preferred to mostly focus away from your name on the most non-glorious of things. I prefer trivial details of life over communing with you in prayer and hearing from you in your holy word. Lord, awaken me with a thirst for the awesome and splendorous, a thirst so powerful it will drive me to turn away from trivia and seek your glory with all my heart until I see enough to move my soul to awe. Lord, I do not want to be amused by your glory. I want to be staggered and rattled and shaken to my core by it. I want to be changed forever by the experience of it. I want to see your majesty so I can have a foretaste of seeing you as you are and thereby become like you. Think. Is there something in your life that is contributing to the shrinking of your soul so that your appetite for awe can be staved off by pathetic substitutes for glory? One of the most soul-shrinking things in existence is television. What else in your life reduces your appetites for true magnificence? promise to trust today. Ezekiel 36, 23. I will show the holiness of my great name.